Anjan, as a neuroscientist, as a neurologist, I'm going to ask you a question that normally is in the domain of philosophers, so I, I ask your indulgence. And that is, um, the, the whole area of epistemology is one of the foundations of philosophical thought, what we can know. It's, the, it's a foundation. And so I'm, I'm looking at the relationship between art and epistemology, and I'm looking at it uh, bidirectionally. From the standpoint of, of, uh, of art, can epistemology be used as a way to understand how we know art, what we know about art? Uh, and on the other hand, uh, can the uniqueness of art that we find ourselves with help us to understand what uh, epistemology is or enrich our understanding of epistemology in terms of what we can know about the external world? That was a complicated question. <laughs> <laughs> um. So is the question, how can neuroscience inform the epistemology of art? Is that a simple way of describing it? That is, that's one of the directions, yes. So that, that, that makes art the target mm -hmm. and says uh, epistemology is, 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 is a mechanism to see how art, uh, what, what, what we can know about art, and, and, and that's a philosophical view. But now I'm saying, what can neuroscience, how can neuroscience uh, 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 inform that process? So let's deal with that first. I think what neuroscience and psychology in general, right? So if you think of neuroscience as being a kind of... Cognitive the, neuroscience. Yeah, cognitive neuroscience, right? Well, uh, what we are... Uh, as a discipline designed to do is understand human responses. Mm. And so to the extent that we have a human response to this object, uh, in this case artwork, yes. we have something to say about that. Okay. Now there are methodologic issues of how you get there, but I think that's, that's where we have something to contribute. Uh, and, uh, so what are the categories of the contribution? The categories of the contribution uh, might be things like uh, what are the uh, perceptual features of the object that, that uh, lead to an aesthetic experience? What are the, the set of emotional uh, experiences or emotional responses that are part of, um, of, a, of an aesthetic experience? And I'll give a, a, an example where the field is starting to appreciate uh, that emotions can be nuanced in an aesthetic encounter uh, in the sense, I'll give a clear example. People pay a lot of money to go see horror movies, right? What's that about, right? <laughs> There's an aesthetic experience where you're, you are paying money to be terrorized, right? <laughs> and so you can have a, a scene of, say, you know, walking down a scary alley in any major big city in America uh, in a movie, in a noir movie that feels, you know, you're titillated and excited and, and scared, but nobody goes out of their way, or not many people will go out of their way to actually walk down such an alley in their city, right? So this notion that you can have, a, in, in aesthetic encounters, that you can have nuanced emotions that are both positive and negative uh, in the real world, but that gets sort of combined to create a powerful experience, right? That's the kind of thing that neuroscience might start to address. Mm -hmm. And finally, this whole notion of meaning and education, right? Uh, is it the case, I pose this as a question, arts education, one of the first things that goes when we have budgetary cuts in our educational system is toss, the, toss arts and music, yeah. right? Is this, does that even make sense? Is there a way in which educating people in the arts, having people informed, uh, transforms experiences, encounters with the arts that then has a transformational effect on people. Mm. Uh, and so neuroscience might have something to say about what is the effect of education on neural responses mm. and then ultimately uh, might have an impact on behavior. I'm going to take you out of your comfort zone and ask you this the, the, the uh, other direction and say from what you've studied in terms of the neuroscience of art, what can that say about the, um, the general features of epistemology in terms of what we as human beings can know about the world? I think neuroscience can uh, offer some boundary conditions. Uh, so I'll, I'll offer a completely trivial example, but I think it's worthwhile, which is that uh, we don't have receptors uh, to apprehend infrared light. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. You might have a fantastic uh, sunset, you know, a gorgeous aesthetic experience of which we are, uh, are ignorant to because we don't have the receptors, right? Uh, so it may be the case that uh, with respect to natural phenomena, there's a whole range uh, that we are unable to experience because the, the constraints, uh, the design of our biology. And so how far can you push that, right? Because then it, you start to say, are there certain kinds of, potentially certain kinds of experiences uh, that are more or less available uh, to us? One, based on the design of our, our, the universal design of our nervous system, but also individual differences, right? That our nervous system, our brains are not static, right? They change, they change based on education experiences. And so there might be some brains, because of the adaptability and the plasticity in brains, that are more susceptible to certain kinds of experiences than others. So what art or, and, and what perception allows us to do is to really explore the boundaries of what epistemology is. For example, the, your, your analogy about uh, infrared. We have some of the most beautiful um, uh, photographs of, of the universe in terms of galaxies or uh, stars or different things are taken in the infrared sure. because we have optical instruments that can read the infrared that we can and then they're falsely colored so we see it so we can appreciate that but if you just looked at it no matter how strong your eyes were you could never see it. And my understanding you'd have to check with an astronomer is that those colors these gorgeous images they have no bearing on uh, there isn't even a mapping of frequency to color. That yeah, these, yeah, are, right. these are artistic interpretations right, of right. energy. Right, 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 right. Um, and uh, in cases where uh, people uh, have um, uh, diseases or traumas uh, and it, it changes their ability to see or experience, I mean, that, you, that affects, in essence, the, the fundamental nature of what it means to know things. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so there are case examples of people, for example, who have had damage to parts of the brain that process color, right? For them, uh, a kind of Matisse, where color might be really an important part of the experience, is just not going to be available to them. 